Today, we shall create difference between mathematical and non-mathematical economics. Since we are moving from literary economics or the economics in the form of diagrams to mathematical economics, we should learn the difference between the two. So today's lecture is focused on, on the differentiation between these two forms of economics. Um, the non-mathematical economics is also known as literary economics. So these are interchangeable words. We can call it non-mathematical non economics as well as it is literary economics, which is studied in the form of language, that is English, and some diagrams. But when we talk about mathematical economics, it has some different flavor. Basically, both of them are two different approaches to economics. One is the mathematical flavor and the other is non-mathematical. When we talk about mathematical flavor, we have things that are like symbols, they are numerics, they are equations, inequalities, trigonometric ratios, calculus. So you might have heard about these words. We will study a little bit more before we apply them. But this flavor is mathematical economics. Ka. यहाँ पर जो हमारे पास assumptions हैं और जो conclusions हैं जो के एक एक important part हैं economics का वो एक different way में हम study करेंगे मैं आपको दो examples दिखाता हूँ firstly हम एक assumption को देखते हैं कि mathematical economics में कैसे present किया जाता है आप सब लोग जानते हैं MPC क्या है marginal propensity to consume कि हमारी income में जो इजाफा होगा जो increment होगा उसमें से हम कितनी consumption करेंगे वो जो ratio है वो हमें बताती है कि वो MPC कितनी है इसकी एक रेंज है या तो हम वो मुकम्मल तौर पे खर्च कर लेंगे और विल बी स्पेंडिंग इट ऑल ऑल ऑफ इट सो इफ आई राइट इट इन मैथमेटिक्स इट विल बी अ वेरी स्मॉल इनइक्वालिटी एज यू कैन सी MPC इज इदर इक्वल और ग्रेटर देन 0 यानी कि ये 0 हो सकता है लेकिन इससे छोटा नहीं हो सकता और MPC कैन बी इक्वल और लेस देन 1 सो इट इज फ्रॉम 0 टू 1 all of that thing that I said earlier can be summarized effectively in, in just one inequality that I have shown you. In another way, we can write the conclusions of economics. And that other way is definitely mathematical way. I am showing you a very famous concept that you have already studied in macroeconomics, and that is the multiplier. Multiplier shows us the effect of uh, the increase in certain variables, for example, the private investment and its impact on the national income. So I can write a formula which is in front of you. KI shows the multiplier and it is actually the ratio of the increase in national income due to the increase in overall private investment. And when we divide them, we get a certain value. So this value of K can explain the whole macroeconomic phenomenon of multiplier. So you see how precise, uh, precise it is and how concise it is, how effective it is. So these are the, uh, the this is the difference between mathematical and the non-mathematical economics. Another set of tools that is used in mathematical economics and is not used in non-mathematical economics is the uh, uh, set of theorems that we can use. Basically, it's it's a combination of various rules that we combine and we come up with a complex sort of uh, rule. Um, let's just come to the simple names of the examples because we, we shall be dealing with them as we go ahead in the process of this course. One of them which is very famous is envelope theorem. It is applied on various theories, for example, producer theory or auction theory. We, we shall also talk about Roy's identity and that is used to find out the Marshallian demand function. We, we can also use Shefford lemma which is used in case of the relationship between the expended expenditure function and the Hicksian demand functions. So these tools are there and we shall be dealing with them in detail. We don't have to worry right now because we are just having an introduction. So this reminds us of this set of advantages that we have in using the mathematical economics as compared to non-mathematical economics. Um, we use symbols and in the deduction and in the, or in the process of deductive reasoning, we use these mathematical symbols and they help us. And they make the results precise and concise. As well as 
they give us the liberty to use more than two variables in one situation. Because when we make a graph, we make one variable on x-axis and the other on y-axis. But what if we have the third variable? We'll have to go to the z-axis, which gives rise to three-dimensional or 3D diagram. What if we have to go to 4D diagram? So here we are stuck. This is where mathematical economics can come to our rescue and allow us to include n number of variables, any number of variables. So it allows us to deal with not just 2D situations, rather 3D, 4D, or ND situations. Um, we should study mathematical economics because these days mathematics is just not simple English and diagrams. It is highly mathematized, as you shall see. And as a practical um, point, I, I would like to tell you, uh, this practical point ex actually explains that when we study research, latest research of high quality periodicals or journals, we come across the American Economic Review, Quarterly Journal of Economics, Journal of Political Economy, Review of St Economics and Statistics, and there is another journal which is known as Economic Journal. When we see the latest literature in economics, we shall see that there is a lot of mathematics used in it. So once if we prepare ourselves and we shift ourselves from non-mathematical economics to mathematical economics, we'll be able to study and understand the latest developments in the field of economics.